So what are the best cheap microphones for creating YouTube videos? In this video, I'm gonna be going through my updated list, including lavalier microphones, shotgun, USB, as well as what to do if your camera doesn't have a microphone input. Coming up. Hey, what's up, Sean here with Think Media, bringing you the best tips and tools for building your influence with online video. And on this channel, we do a lot of YouTube tips videos as well as tech gear reviews, just like this one. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And hey, at any point during the video, check out show notes and links in the description below. I'll list out all the gear I talk about down there, as well as bonus accessories and things like that. Let's jump into the video. So one of the most important aspects of good video is great audio. And the cool thing is improving your audio doesn't have to break the bank. In fact, for as little as $20, you can make huge improvements to your sound quality. So let's first jump into my favorite budget lavalier mic, and that is the Boya BYM1. And before we do a test of the Boya mic, I want you to hear just the on-camera mic. So we're shooting with a Sony a7 III, and any on-camera mic can be okay, but it's never the best. So we're in a kind of home office right now, no special audio treatment, and this is what the audio sounds like. So right now we're gonna plug in the Boya mic to see how good a $20 microphone can sound. Now you're hearing the Boya BYM1. So this is a lavalier microphone, which means it's just clipped right on to my shirt. You can pick this up on Amazon for right around $20 here in the US. And one of the reasons I love this microphone is because it has a ton of cord with it. So you'll plug this into the mic jack in your camera, and then it has a battery that goes inside of it, and it has a camera mode and also a smartphone mode. So what's cool about this microphone is you can use it with your existing smartphone or your DSLR. And if you use it with the DSLR, there's a little battery that goes in there. And it comes with one battery, but I also want to recommend ordering extras because we all oftentimes accidentally leave it turned on. And so the combo of these two right here can really level up your audio. You get plenty of cable length in case you want to shoot a video where you're very far away from the camera. And again, you just hook it onto any shirt or any piece of apparel and you can get audio that sounds just like this. Now, one of the limitations of a lavalier microphone like this is that if you plug it directly into your camera, you only have the one audio source. So let's say you wanted to do an interview with somebody or do a collab with two people on camera. Boya actually has a $30 version that adds a second microphone with one plug. So ultimately, it's gonna record on a left channel and a right channel, but we were able to test this out at NAB recently. Okay, so now you are hearing the Boya mics. We have the wires all hidden. We're lapeled up right here and I'm sitting with Heather. How's it going again? Good. And it's actually a great option. Again, for just $30 here in the US, it is some serious audio improvement with a great price. Okay, for our next style of microphone, let's check out a shotgun microphone. Again, this is a lavalier mic. It hooks onto a person's body, onto their shirt somewhere. The shotgun microphone, of course, goes on top of the camera. And my favorite budget option is the Tackstar SGC 598. Now, this is a great microphone. It's powered by just one AA battery. And so you can always keep those on hand in case you leave the power on. You fire this guy up. And what's also nice about this microphone is it has a 10 10 dB audio gain boost that is optional. The reason I love that is there are some Canon cameras that have kind of weak um, audio amps internally. And so by getting more power out of the microphone, you can make your camera sound even better, whether you have an, a 70D or like a T5i or a T6i. A mic like this with that gain can really dial in your audio to sounding awesome. So now let's look at how the Tackstar mic sounds compared to this Boya mic. So right now you're hearing the Tackstar mic. I'm sitting about two, three feet away from the camera and we're in the same audio setting. This microphone retails for about $26 here in the US and is should be readily available around the world. And the one downside to a shotgun mic is if you move too far away from the camera, you're gonna probably wanna use a different audio option, something that's either wireless or that has a lot of cable like the Boya we just talked about. But I would definitely recommend a shotgun mic like this for also vlogging. You've 
seen popular vloggers putting that right on top of their mirrorless camera or their DSLR so that you have a little bit better audio knowing you're always gonna be in a relatively close distance recording that audio. And what's also nice about a microphone like this is if I was to be doing a collab with say two people on camera and we were both sitting like right here and here, one shotgun mic is usually sufficient to pick up audio like that. So now we're back to the on-camera audio. So let me know in the comments if you've been noticing the difference between having these microphones and not having them, and what do you think they sound like. But we just heard the Tackstar. Now we're gonna move to a different style of microphone, which is a USB microphone. So this actually plugs into your computer, not your camera, and we're gonna record this on a separate laptop so you can hear the audio of this blue snowball. This is the Blue Snowball Ice, and this retails for right around $50 here in the US, although a lot of times it's on sale for around $40. And this is a very popular microphone for gaming, for doing voiceovers. Again, you can see I'm holding it here, but typically it'd be sitting on a desk, people use it for podcasting and if you're going to use it for a shoot like this you would need to sync the audio in post so we're recording the audio in Adobe Audition just getting that audio file and then we'll sync it up with the video file later in editing and by now you might have noticed that actually having different microphones for different scenarios can be important because none of these microphones are really one size fits all it depends on your end goal the end intent and what you think you'll be using it the most for now around fifty dollars this isn't super cheap but i just want to make a mention here i haven't personally tested it but the newer nw7000 usb mic comes in for around twenty dollars it's a usb microphone like this you can have a stand or if you want to have kind of an arm like you've seen me shoot our live streams before you can add that in and it's a very affordable option to get a microphone sound like this and typically USB microphones sound the best but again they're in the shot you you usually don't talk to them from very far away you want to be pretty close and so it's not really a one-size-fits-all but if you want to do narration you want to have that crispy voiceover you want really superior audio or you're doing live streaming or gaming definitely consider checking Checking out a USB microphone and I'll link up the Niwer and the Blue Snowball Ice so you can do some more research on those in the YouTube description. So, so far we've covered budget lavalier, shotgun, and USB microphones, but what if you wanted a handheld microphone or if your microphone doesn't have a mic input? Well, a handheld microphone like this usually is going to be pretty expensive, wireless, and this one can run from $700 to $1,000 from Sennheiser. We have a full video about it if you want to invest in much higher pro gear, so we'll link that up on the YouTube card. But recently at NAB, we covered two of the best budget wireless handheld microphones. Now, they're not super cheap. They're still around $100, $150 here in the US, but that's about one-tenth or one-seventh of what this costs, and they sound pretty great. So if you are specifically looking for a journalism on-the-go handheld type of a microphone, we'll put a link on the YouTube card to that video so you can hear the comparison of those two mics. But then the other question is, what if your camera does not have a microphone input? If that's the case, then my first recommendation is an audio recorder like the Zoom H1. Now this is a microphone audio recorder combo. Comes in around $100 here in the US or a little bit cheaper because there is a newer version out now. And what it actually gives you is not just a microphone itself, which I've used a lot of times for handheld interviews just like this. So in this video, I talk with Sunny Leonard Doozy about Snapchat tips, how to get your videos found in search, and her A strategy coming up. It records the audio files directly to the device, so you would need to sync up that audio in editing later. But it also has a microphone input, a line in right on it, in case you want to plug in some other mic, potentially get it closer to your subject, or again, you don't have a microphone input. So you could just mount this on top of your camera or record the audio separate so you can then combine that superior audio. However, you probably don't even need this. And if you didn't want to get an external audio recorder for some other reason, I want to recommend your smartphone. Your smartphone is typically 
typically a great device for just plugging in a microphone and recording using your voice memos or some other app for capturing audio. So example, if you ordered the Boya mic and you wanted to capture that audio clipped onto your shirt, what you could do is plug that into the headphone microphone jack on your smartphone or if you need your dongle for like a newer iPhone, you could just use the converter and now that's gonna work in your smartphone. You could capture that audio file the whole time on your phone and then connect that later in editing to the video file that you shoot on your camera. That is a way to get around not having a microphone input and actually I was impressed with a setup recently from Rachel David. She interviewed me over on her channel and we'll link to that interview talking all about building your income come with affiliate marketing and monetizing on YouTube. But what she actually did was she just used a point and shoot camera G7X, which doesn't have a microphone input. That was the main angle. And then what she actually did was used her iPhone as a secondary angle to capture our audio. And she used a more expensive dual lavalier setup. So there was a microphone on her, there was a microphone on me, and she captured video, a second angle with her iPhone. And then the audio was all captured by her phone. And then she just edited that all together into one complete interview with good audio and two different camera angles. So I hope that some of the tips in this video will help you potentially put together a setup that doesn't have to bring break the bank that can get you good audio no matter what gear you have. Remember, it's never really about your resources, it's about your resourcefulness. So always look for ways to maximize whatever gear you have. Question of the day, how are you currently capturing audio for your videos? Have you invested in any budget microphones? And do you have any recommendations of good microphones for video? Let me know in the comment section below. So thanks for checking out this video. Subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't yet. And if you wanna see other videos in our budget YouTube equipment series, click or tap the screen right there. For another video from Think Media, click or tap the screen right there. Until next time, this channel is all about bringing you the best tips and tools for building your influence with online video. Keep crushing it, and we will talk soon.